Uh, welcome to my tutorial for um, a program called Cycle by Amaranth Audio. And um, Cycle is a synthesizer that can function as a plugin for your usual um, sequencer, or you can run it in standalone mode, which is what I'm doing at the moment. Um, and yeah, while it is a synthesizer, it's not really a synthesizer in the traditional sense. Um, it relies on what I would say two types of synthesis. Uh, one is spectral synthesis, where you, where you draw the harmonics of a waveform. And the other side of it is where it's kind of like a wavetable synthesis, where you get to draw the the waveform and specify how it looks at different stages in the timeline. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been trying to figure this thing out for a while, and uh, I think I finally got the hang of it. And um, but it took me a while. I don't think the the kind of videos online so far really give you an intro to it. And uh, I think a number of people have reported that it's quite difficult to get your head around. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd uh, I'd give give a brief tutorial on how to get started. So, um, yeah, the first thing to do is to start yeah just start a new sound really um you can flick through a bunch of presets that come with it worth doing there's there's so many of them and they're very very high quality but we're not going to do that for now um there's another four videos that do that so you can go through that if you've got the time um so we're just going to start a new sound so you go to file press new um i'm not going to save that and that will clear everything and get you started now the thing about cycle there's certain elements about it's GUI um, that um, are remembered between instances. So if you close it down and reload it, certain elements of the GUI will stay how you had them before. And if you're not aware of them or you're trying to learn how to use it, that can be quite confusing. So there's a couple of things that I recommend you do um, when you first start using this to make your own sounds. Um, the first thing is to kind of make sure all these link buttons here are selected. So you'll see there's three buttons, two of them are selected, and you want to just make sure all three look like that. Okay. The next thing I would do is to make sure that this button over here, this domain button, um, it can sometimes be on that and it'll look orange, is just on the bar graph mode here. And that will save you a bit of trouble later on. Uh, there's a few times where I've been using this and Things don't behave as expected, and it's normally because either this is on the phase view or these three um, icons aren't linked. Okay, so before we start making a sound, there's a concept about time that I think um, you need to be aware of, really, uh, understand how time works with this. So there are three axes that a sound can develop on. Um, in, in cycle. Uh, the first one is time, so you've got a starting point and an end point and the, the sound will develop between those two points. Um, you've got key, which is the beginning of the keyboard right to the end of the keyboard, so that lets you do kind of key tracking effects where higher notes might be a bit more muted um, than lower notes and so on. And then you've got the modulation wheel which is the third axis, so that's kind of the modulation wheel being all the way down and then the modulation wheel being all the way up. And these, these axes positions for your display purposes only are adjustable up here. So you can, where it says morph position up here, you've got these three axes and you can set the waveform in the views below to show you what it looks like at that particular time point. Okay, so that's time, you've got key and then you've got mod wheel. So the first question that may spring to your mind is, well, how long is this time frame? How many seconds does it take to reach from the beginning point to the end point? And that is arbitrary. That is up to you. And you can set that by using this function here, which is the duration. Um, so you can, you can adjust this. It doesn't actually tell you how many seconds it is, so you have to use your ears, but the higher this bar is, the longer it takes to get from one end of this time frame to the end of that time frame. And the shorter it is, so you can, um, once we get into some of the later features, you'll see how that can be quite a useful way to shape your sounds and go from long evolving sounds to short pluck sounds and anything in between. 
So the next thing to do really is to start drawing a waveform. So we're going to concentrate on this wave shape editor here in the middle, and we're just kind of gonna we're gonna draw our waveforms here, and hopefully they will sound, and you'll be able to kind of have a direct um, appreciation for how something visually translates into something audio. If you've if you've used sample editors where you can draw your own waveforms and things like that, you should be fairly comfortable with this because it's the same kind of thing, but it's just using vector graphics rather than kind of drawing each sample. So the first thing to do is just get your mouse and by, by pressing left click you can add points. So we're going to press left click there, we're going to do one just down here, we're going to do one just, actually let's do it there, and one up here. So now you can see these faint lines. Um, let's zoom in a bit. You can see these faint lines kind of show a square wave, but the thick line, which actually represents what the waveform is, shows a sine wave um, or something approximating a sine wave. And you can also see up here that it's al already drawn out the harmonics of this particular waveform. So, but this isn't the square wave that we're looking for. So we want to make sure that. We, we sharpen these curves and you can just literally do that by hovering the mouse over there and you can see it changes and then you can lift it up and you can go through each point and sharpen it and that will give you the square wave and as you can see as we do it in this view here you'll see the harmonic view updates so it's showing you how the addition of harmonics is happening um, as you change the waveform so you know you go back to that very few harmonics and as you sharpen the edges, you'll see you're creating more and more harmonics. Um, so let's have a listen to this. Uh, we'll just press a few keys. So, fairly standard sounding square wave. Um, so the next thing to do is to start looking at how we can um, modulate the width of this square wave. And we can kind of audition how it might sound ourselves and by just dragging some of these points and shifting them around while we play, press keys on the keyboard. So to select multiple points you hold down shift and then press on the left mouse again um, and you can see it's for some reason it's selected all of these it might be because some of these are already selected if that happens to you just press escape it will get rid of your selection and then just draw the selection again. So this time around you can see it's just selected these two points here. Now if I press some keys and then move this around, you'll hear how the sound could sound as we modulate the pulse width. So. Okay, so you can see I can I can I can do this manually, but what I want to do is make this happen over time. So I want it to start off whilst it's at the beginning of this waveform. At the, at the fullest width and at the end of the waveform I want it to be quite narrow um, and then you should be able to hear that in the, in the speakers as it morphs from the two different states so the way to do that is to start looking at the these link buttons up here so what isn't immediately apparent when you're looking at these is that every point actually is two points it's um, the start point and the end point on top of each other and when you when these link buttons are selected when you move things around it moves both points it moves your start point and your end point at the same time when you unlink these it will only move either the start points or the end points or whichever points you've got selected at the time so I'm just going to demonstrate that um, how that works so first of all I'm going to press escape just to deselect whatever I've got I'm going to make sure that the timeline is set to the beginning Okay, and then we're going to unlink this time axis here. So that means now when I move points, I'm moving either the start points or the end points, and it, you're, you're de linking the start and end points from each other. Um, so I'm just going to hold down shift, I'm going to drag it over that. Now, this should in theory have selected the start points. Um, so when I drag this, and you can see, see these little brown lines appearing. Okay. So that's saying that's that's kind of showing the path that these points will take over time, and you can see it's not going to do much over a short space of time. Okay, so we're going to kind of leave that there, 
as it is. Um, and let's let's move it down here. So let's start off quite a wide width up here to kind of emphasize the effect. Okay, so that's the start point that we've just set. So now I'm going to press escape. I'm going to deselect everything. I'm going to move this time slider up here. And as you can see, when I do that, you can see in the middle, the waveform is moving to that end point. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these endpoints and move them further in. So again, hold down shift, drag your mouse over it, and drag this all the way in. Now bear remember, this only works when you have the, the link thing deselected. Um, so now you can see there's these brown lines that show the path that these two points that these two points are going to take over time. The brown line indicates that it's a time axis. And you can kind of preview it by holding down this slider up here and then moving this slider to the left. And you can see that the waveform becomes wider and as time progresses, it becomes narrower. Okay? Now that we've done that, a crucial thing to remember to stop messing things up is um, just to relink again. Okay? So um, now this reconnects, it locks the start and end points together. Now if I move things, it's going to move the whole line. You see? So it's moving the whole timeline rather than just the end or the start points. So the link buttons are quite crucial, it's quite quite important to get familiar with them to start with, how they work, um, because they they apply to not just the time axis, they also apply to the key scale and the modulation wheel axis. So you can do similar kind of things you know, effectively making the um, waveform change shape or morph as you go up and down the keyboard or also as you adjust the modulation wheel. So now we've got that and you can see along the time axis the waveform gets wider and thinner. So let's hear how that sounds. So we're just going to press a few keys. And you can, you can hear the the kind of characteristic sound of pulse wave modulation as the square waves gets uh, narrower you can hear the tone of the sound shift I'll just press that again and as I described earlier this duration slider will let you make that happen that change that sweep happen over a, a shorter or longer period of time so I can drag it down and it will happen much quicker so you can kind of hear that the, the, the shift is in the album, is in kind of the attack stage. Or we can make it much, much longer. So we can go. So we're going to set it in the middle, um, but I hope that kind of explains um, how, how this duration slider links to this time slider. So, you know, just to recap at this point, we've drawn a square way, we've modulated the width over time so as time increases then the width of the wave gets smaller and uh, you can see that has knock-on effects to the harmonics here but we're not directly manipulating those and as you bring it open it does that and we can hear it so as you can imagine this time exists on an axis and we can manipulate how it moves along this time axis um, and like you could um, Let's use the, the record analogy as you've got a spinning record. You can touch the record to slow it down. You can pull it backwards to make it go backwards in time. Uh, effectively, you can scratch it. And what you're doing with a piece of music is scratching the timeline. And you can do exactly the same thing with this, uh, with the handily labeled scratch envelope. So um, that lives down here in the envelope section. So let's just zoom into that. So. Down here, it will default typically to the volume envelope, which is also deactivated. So this lightning rod, um, when it's on, is activated. When it's off, is deactivated. So typically, when you start a new patch, um, cycle will default to the volume envelope, but it's switched off. And then you've got a couple of other envelopes here. You've got this, which is the scratch envelope, which is what we're going to explore now. And you've also got the uh, the pitch envelope, which we will perhaps leave for another tutorial, um, but feel free to mess around with it. It's um, it just lets you wobble the pitch um, and add vibrator and whatnot. So the scratch envelope. So the scratch envelope is specifically linked to time, and it controls um, how the the path that the points take 
relates to the overall time axis. I know that's a bit confusing, but it'll probably become easier to demonstrate. So the horizontal axis on this envelope is total time, is from, you know, represented by this duration slider up here. It's the total amount of time that the sound takes to evolve. The vertical axis is this slider here, okay? This time slider, this which influences the position of this um, this waveform. So, as you can see here, by default, it's starting at the bottom. So it's starting here, and as time goes on, it progresses along there in a linear way, which is demonstrated by this line going from bottom left to the bottom right. So we'll turn that on, and you should hear no difference to how it sounded before, because it's just going from one position to the next. So let's have a listen. <laughs> Okay, so if we wanted to stop this sweeping across this timeline, we could just drag this endpoint. By the way, dragging points is with the right click, if I haven't explained that already. Drag that point, drag that point down, and now it should just sound, it won't move, it won't morph. So let's have a listen. So you can see that because the start and end point on this is set down to the bottom, this timeline never changes, it just stays there. And we can do the same for the other end. So right click on this, drag it up, right click on this, drag it up, and now it will kind of sound at the thinner end. Okay, so and we can also reverse the way that it goes through time. So it can start off thin and get fat. So you can see we've kind of started off there and moved down there. So. We can go back to how it was originally, where it starts off fat and goes thin. Okay, so you can add points to this envelope and start getting quite clever with how the timeline starts moving up and down. So let's just do an example. Let's do that. Let's do that. And now you should hear it kind of sweep up and down the modulation. Okay, um, and again, similarly to the other ones, we can sharpen or decrease these um, these curves. So I'm going to just make these a bit softer and just get this how I want to sound. Now, you can kind of drag these windows up to kind of get a better view on it. So let's have a listen to that. So now we've got this time axis. Let's just put this down again. So, um, and as you drag along here now, you'll see that the waveform is wobbling along the time axis. So you can see the effect immediately as you as you scrub the timeline. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing to do is to kind of loop perhaps the section of here while it's wobbling. And the way to do that is just right click on near the point that you want to be the start of the loop point and then click on this loop button. So now you've got the envelope starting here, it's going up, and then it's going to loop around this section here. Let's have a listen. And so if you wanted to kind of emphasize a bit more, you can just drag this down here. You can probably drag the curve up a bit so it's kind of more emphasized. And if you think that's a bit too slow, then you can go back to this duration slider up here and drag that down, which will speed it up. We can go up. Oops, excuse me. So now you can see we've got the beginnings of um, a sound, um, which is a square wave being pulse wave modulated. And so the, the final thing I'm going to do is add a low pass filter to this so that you can um, filter it as you would. Kind of. And um, we're going we're gonna to attach the low pass filter to the mod wheel. So Cycle itself doesn't come with any pre built filters. Uh, it, you have to build your own. And if you think about what a filter is doing, it's effectively um, d 
discarding frequencies above a specific point and emphasizing perhaps frequencies at that point to give you resonance and um, what cycle lets you do is draw your own filter shapes and modulate them um, which is incredibly powerful really when you think about it you're not restricted to any particular type of filter and your filter shape itself can morph over time so let's have a have a look at that we're going to use this spectrum envelope here now so the way the way you can think of this is these are kind of two oscillators um, so you've got this wave shape editor which is one oscillator and you've got this um, uh, spectrum view which is another oscillator but it, is, it can also act as a filter and that's set by these functions here um, it's actually probably confusing to think of it as another oscillator at this point in time so ignore that we're just going to use it as a filter so anyway I'll, I'll just get on with it and I'll show you how it works um, so like below you can click with the left mouse button here to add points and we're just going to do that we're going to draw what what might look like a typical low pass filter um, and so let's kind of do that okay maybe another point here just to emphasize that peak and we'll drag this up here uh, maybe drag this down there so you can see here we've, we've got uh, a shape that looks like a low pass filter and it's actually active as we speak and it's currently on this mode which is set to spectral filtering um, so yeah you can so it's either anything anything above this line is adding harmonics and anything below this line is subtracting them and you can see it kind of handily um, shows you the difference and what we can also do like we did before is select all these points and then move it around while we play some keys Okay, so that's the beginnings of our filter. Um, so I'm just going to assign that to the mod wheel, and we do that in the same way again. So first of all, I press escape, deselect everything. I'm going to delink this, and then I'm going to set the mod wheel to the bottom. And while it's the mod wheel's at the bottom, I want it to kind of be around here. In fact, I might just kind of move it out to right at the top. So right at the bottom, mod wheel's there. And then I'm going to drag this mod wheel up here, I'm going to go back here, press escape, uh, reselect the points and then while the mod wheel is all the way up I'm going to drag them all the way down. So basically what I'm doing is um, assigning the mod wheel to move this wave, this spectrum shape. Okay, let's have a, you can see that through here, what's happening. Um, and and you know what I might do is is kind of um, maybe maybe adjust this point so by the time it's getting down here the resonance isn't so high so we can literally just drag this down yeah. so you can see as as the modulation goes up the resonance is climbing and then it all kind of just go down towards there so let's have a listen. Um, now you might notice uh, there's some clicking in there and that's kind of one of the side effects of drawing waveforms like this but it's quite easy to get rid of. Uh, if you just go to the audio menu up there and press D click it will get rid of the clicks so now we can have a uh, sound that we play around with a bit more nicely. <laughs> You can also hear it's clipping a little bit and you can kind of just turn it down a little bit to stop the sound clipping so much. And you know what, to finish this off we might just um, add some unison to it. So you can see there's an effect here uh, which we turn on and let's maybe add three, four waveforms to this, let's have a listen. Mm -hmm. 
And maybe a bit of delay, just to... get the idea. Um, I think that's everything covered for now so just to recap what we've done is we've created a waveform here which is a square wave and that modulates um, over time um, and the path of that is controlled by this scratch envelope which we've turned on over here and set how it progresses across the timeline and then finally we've added a low pass filter which we designed the filter shape ourselves and then set it to move those points um, as we did with the waveform but this time being controlled by the mod wheel and then to touch it all off we've had a unison and a delay effect just to kind of make it sound nice so I think that's it for now I hope that's been useful uh, in getting you started and thinking about how to use Cycle um, as you can see because of the way it's so low level what you can do with this um, is incredibly powerful and you can get some very very realistic sounding instruments um, I would recommend you go through these presets um, the author of this, Davin, is clearly a talented sound designer and he's made some fantastic sounds which will really give you a sense of um, what you can accomplish with this and now that you know how perhaps some of this is structured you can start deconstructing some of the sounds that come with this and seeing how they've been built. Um, I'll look again at in another tutorial perhaps a bit more about this spectrogram and how you can start layering different sounds and emulating multiple oscillators and so forth. Okay that's all for now I hope that's been useful 